We told you back in March about Victoria Hampton, a Bakersfield business owner who confronted a group of alleged car thieves and paid with her life. But don't let that simple description fool you. This multi-layered tale has one strange plot twist after another. A little after 6 a.m. on March 19, 2023, a gray Toyota Prius pulled up in front of Vicki Hampton's modest three-bedroom house near the end of a southwest Bakersfield cul-de-sac. A dark plaid figure jumped out and approached Hampton's pride and joy, her Dodge Hellcat muscle car parked on the street. The man shattered a window, climbed in, and likely with the help of an accomplice in the Prius, maneuvered the two cars into bumper-to-bumper -bumper position. Then the Prius stealthily pushed the Hellcat down the street and out of sight. Minutes later, Hampton glanced at a home surveillance monitor and noticed something was amiss. Her metallic maroon 2021 Hellcat, one of the fastest, most powerful cars on the American road, was gone. Instead of calling 911, she called her best friend, Teresa Klein. You're not gonna believe what happened, she told Klein, according to the 640 page police report. Someone stole my Hellcat. She was determined to find it, Hampton said, and she was taking her friend Klein along for the ride on speakerphone. And so began a convoluted, multifaceted tragedy that before it was over, would touch on cars, guns, technology, bureaucracy, and sexual identity. The Dodge Hellcat, a bigger, badder, less common cousin of the Dodge Challenger SRT, is one of the most desirable modern muscle cars available to ordinary consumers. Fewer than 18,000 have been built in the last eight years, and soon they'll be rarer still. The present generation Hellcat and its Hemi V8 engine will be discontinued after this year as Dodge ramps up production of electric vehicles. That, according to the laws of supply and demand, makes the Hellcat and its supercharged 6.2 liter engine an even hotter item, zero to 60 in under four seconds with a top speed of 202 miles per hour. That combination of speed and power is unusual and even with an off the lot price of between $90,000 and $150,000, they can be hard to come by. Little wonder the Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat and its cousin, the Dodge Charger, are stolen five times more than the average car. Here's surveillance video from a Dodge dealership in Kentucky last February. Thieves broke in and in 40 seconds flat, made off with six Hellcats, a loss of $600,000. Muscle car aficionados and car thieves alike love Hellcats, and so did Vicki Hampton. It was a special car, a wonder of consumer level automotive engineering. The tool Vicki Hampton used to locate her stolen car, however, was deceptively ordinary looking. She would be the first person to step up. This is the car that was taken. And used a tracking device to find this car. She liked to drive fast. Dodge Challenger Hellcat Red Eye. Wait a minute, that's my daughter. And that's when he told us that she had been murdered. If I there's a man down. Yeah, Absolutely been shot. For 16 years, murder victim Vicki Hampton ran Tent Masters, a window tinting business in southwest Bakersfield with her late husband, Chuck Mathis, who died in 2021. She was close with her industrial park neighbors who came to recognize and appreciate her passion for the model of car she cherished most, Dodge Challengers. I'm told she had three of them, at least one black and one maroon. The maroon one was a 2021 Hellcat. She got the Hellcat, but those were Scotty Di Pioli, who for years has managed the automotive shop next door to Tent Masters, said the maroon Hellcat was her favorite. I said, Vicky, let me drive it. Let me drive it. She said, no. So she took me for a ride, and I mean, wow. She liked horsepower. Let's put it that way. In the entire state of California, I believe. She Jazz was. McKay, a retired radio talk show host who became a good friend, says he was blown away by the machine. She gets in, she starts it up, and it's a nice low rumble. She flips that switch, and those cutouts drop, and. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was like, honey, you're you're just you're you're going over the top. Whenever you seen Vicky, it was never because she had a problem or she needed help with something. It was always she was helping someone or or just figuring it out herself. Vicki Hampton lived in the stolen car capital of the country. Bakersfield has had the most car thefts in the U.S. per capita for three years straight, including an auto theft rate in 2021 of 1,023 per 100,000 residents. That's about 300 car thefts a month. So given the Hellcat's unique popularity among thieves, maybe the morning of March 19th was inevitable. The theft of Hampton's muscle car wasn't even the first Bakersfield Hellcat heist that rainy morning. An hour and a half earlier, at about 4.30 a.m., the four Los Angeles area men who would eventually be charged in the Vicki Hampton case allegedly tried to make off with a Hellcat parked in South Bakersfield, just off Acres Road. They broke a window, put the car in neutral, and pushed it down the street with their own vehicle, only to abandon the Hellcat a short distance away. Then they drove three and a half miles to Hampton's home on Curry Court. This time, after shattering a window, they pushed the targeted Hellcat a mere 600 feet to the next cul-de-sac over, near the corner of Saffron and Ginger. Hampton, stunned and outraged as she spoke on the phone with her best friend, Teresa Klein, came to a realization. She might be able to track her car with a bit of 21st century technology. This, an Apple AirTag, about the size of a quarter. The device emits an invisible Bluetooth beacon that using random iPhones, the way mobile phones relay signals from cell towers, can pinpoint the location of whatever it's attached to, your luggage, your bicycle, your dog, or tucked away somewhere inside or out, your car. I can't imagine her not being armed going out there. Not contacting police was Vicki Hampton's big mistake. But then she wasn't one to back down from anything. Down to earth, cool. Martin Duenas works at Hampton's favorite gun store, Bear Mountain Sports. Pretty outspoken and stuff. She's just a nice person. There are three groups of people, I think, in this, in this community that, that are really strong. It's the country western music community, the gun community, and the car community. You know, she was solid with all those people. Now, on her iPhone screen, Hampton could see where the prized Hellcat was parked, and it wasn't far. Hampton climbed into her other Dodge muscle car, a black four-door 2018 Challenger SRT, and picked up the scent as Teresa Klein listened in on the speakerphone. She told her, oh, there it is, I found it. She said, I'm, I'm gonna go scare these guys off. Well, she probably assumed it was just some punk kids. Klein told officers she could hear Hampton stopping, putting the black Challenger in park, opening the car door, and then slamming it shut. Then she heard Hampton yell, hey, Hey, what the F are you doing? And just like that, pop, pop, pop. And they shot her in the head. I went and turned my porch light on like two, three times. Dan Norcross, who lives 100 feet from the scene of the shooting, was in his boxers when he heard a commotion outside. As I got to the corner right over here. I heard blam, 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 you know. And then the guy jumped in the car, pulled up in that driveway, the second driveway. Oh, boy, he backed up, pulled up there, backed out, and went around the corner and down White Lane. Norcross ran back into his house and called 911. The metallic red 2018 Dodge Charger Hellcat with the plate of the Charles Yellow David 002 that was GTA from that area. That's going to possibly be the victim vehicle, the victim that's down. Vicky's friend Teresa Klein heard everything. Two or three shots, she said. Are you okay? She shouted into the phone, according to the police report. No response. She could hear a car alarm going off and then the sound of a vehicle roaring away. Klein told her husband they needed to leave immediately to find Hampton. As they did, another woman's voice came on the phone. He's in bad shape, the woman said. Asked to describe the injured person, the woman answered, a larger person with long hair. Vicki Hampton was five foot 11 and perhaps 250 pounds. Klein was now certain it was her friend. Emergency responders found Hampton face down on the rain-soaked asphalt at 6.32 a.m., bleeding from the back of the head. 
When they rolled her over, they found a 9 millimeter handgun in her left hand beneath her body. Victoria Anna Marie Vicky Hampton, age 61, clung to life for almost two weeks. Then on April 1st, she died. An armory on wheels. That's one way to characterize Vicki Hampton's mobile and diverse collection of firearms. How likely a vehicle is to be stolen. Consistent with prior years, many of the vehicles on the top 20 list are vehicles that are powerful, are pricey. The two vehicles at the top of the list were versions of the Dodge Charger. At the very top of the list were the Hellcat variants of the Charger. Apple AirTags are handy devices, about 30 bucks. Attach one to things of importance in your life and never misplace any of those things again, unless that misplaced item has fallen into the hands of an alleged car thief, an armed alleged car thief. But then Vicki Hampton was not intimidated by guns. Quite the opposite. She loved guns, and she owned enough of them to supply a small army. She once showed her friend Jazz McKay her multiple gun safes, each one packed with firearms of all description. I said to her, how many, how many, how many guns do you own? She says, well, I, I've never really counted. And I said, you have got to have as many guns as as Ted Nugent. Our Vice President Hillary Clinton, they're criminals. And Jazz McKay would know. He says he once co-hosted a radio talk show with the Motor City Madman, who's now an NRA board member. Hampton, according to the Sheriff's Department, was not one of the more than 11,500 Kern County residents with a permit to carry a concealed weapon. But that didn't prevent her from packing when she confronted the alleged car thieves. In fact, the second shot that went off almost immediately after Hampton was hit most likely came from Hampton's own weapon, a 9mm Sig Sauer handgun. Police towed Hampton's black Challenger, the one in which she'd pursued the car thieves, and after obtaining a search warrant, combed through the vehicle. They found a semi-automatic Dan Wesson 45 with a hammer pulled back, a Ruger 1022 semi-automatic rifle with a scope, six knives, including a switchblade, six fully loaded magazines, and five boxes of ammunition, including 100 hollow point rounds. Inside Hampton's maroon Dodge Hellcat, police found a 45 caliber semi-automatic handgun with 17 fully loaded magazines. Hampton, Klein told police, had guns stored in all her vehicles. Did all that weaponry give Hampton an elevated sense of empowerment, an unjustified feeling of confidence? We'll never know. I think there's a man down. Yeah, Possibly been shot. There's two oh. shot, one victims in the roadway. There's a horn honking in the background. Possibly the victim. It's going to be a black Dodge. There's another RP advising two shots out of the vehicle, speeding on possibly a dark color snow. Man down the roadway after a horn behind to a vehicle, unknown situation. The four men now accused of stealing Vicki Hampton's prized Dodge Hellcat, and in the case of one suspect, murdering her, left footprints, digital footprints. Bakersfield police obtained records of cell tower pings during and after the day of the shooting, and having developed a list of possible suspects from that research, obtained phone, internet, and social media information that confirmed the likelihood they had the right people in their sights. On June 21st, more than a dozen Bakersfield detectives and patrol officers staked out several Southland locations, including, starting at 4 a.m. that morning, an apartment building in the Los Angeles County city of Bellflower. At 2.06 p.m., as the primary suspect walked down an alley near his mother's apartment, police moved in. By day's end, officers had arrested four suspects, 19-year-old David Tyrone Thompson of Bellflower, 18-year-old Adam Ransom of Linwood, 23-year-old Joseph Bush of Anaheim, and 19-year-old Giovanni Garcia of Long Beach. Bakersfield police have looked into other recent Hellcat thefts in LA County, one from a home in Lakewood on March 13th, 
another from a Cerritos Dodge dealership March 26th, and an arrest in May in Buena Park involving one of the Bakersfield suspects, Joseph Bush, caught fleeing from police in a stolen Jeep Grand Cherokee at speeds reaching 100 miles per hour. The suspects faced charges ranging from carjacking and grand theft auto to, in Thompson's case, first degree murder. None have any residential connection to Bakersfield. Did Hampton stumble upon a stolen car ring specifically interested in Hellcats? Jazz McKay thinks so. These were not four guys walking down the street one day, you know, oh, look, there's a Dodge Hellcat. Let's go get it. No. Bakersfield police won't say if these suspects could be connected to professional car theft operations, but they acknowledge that out-of-area thieves have in the past targeted specific makes and models. Three months later, the case took yet another bizarre twist, shortly after news of the four suspects' arrest appeared in the Bakersfield Californian. That is how Richard Escadero of Bakersfield and Nancy Hazel of Texas, Hampton's divorced parents, learned their child was dead. The morning of June 22nd, Escadero, like he did every morning, picked up the newspaper from the driveway, went inside, sat on the living room sofa, and with the television mumbling in the background, went straight to the local crime roundup, and there it was. And I come across this name, is it Vicki Ann Marie Hampton? And I said, wait a minute, that's my daughter. That's her name. And I couldn't believe it. It was, it was a traumatic experience for me to see that. And, and immediately I said, this, it had happened March the 19th. I was never notified. Her mother was never notified. No one in my family was notified. Escadero immediately called Bakersfield police, and then he called his ex-wife. And then it got worse. Escadero learned Hampton's remains had been turned over to someone he didn't know, and his daughter's body had been cremated. The coroner's office had released the remains to Teresa Klein, the woman Vicky had been on the phone with the morning of the shooting. Klein had allegedly claimed to be the victim's sister, according to a claim brought by Escadero against the county. Klein denies having presented herself to the coroner's office as Hampton's sister, but that's how she's listed on the death certificate. The claim seeks $500,000 on behalf of the parents, alleging the coroner's office did not follow its own protocols. The claim was filed July 13th by attorney Eugene Lorenz. I've got enough information from my investigators to know that there was a, a major uh, screw up in the uh, coroner's office. There's no spouse and there are no children. And there are two parents that are named in a Bakersfield uh, birth certificate. Not hard to find. Hampton was estranged from her parents, according to Klein. The reason, Klein told police, a sex change operation in Denmark 35 years ago that turned Jeffrey Scott Escadero into Victoria Ann Marie Hampton. Her parents disowned her, Klein told police. The family's claim, a precursor to a lawsuit, acknowledges Hampton's transgender status. But Richard Escadero says Hampton was estranged because she had misappropriated thousands of dollars of her grandmother's money. We may never know the real reason. In the meantime, all parties are left to reel from the bizarre succession of events and the consequences of Hampton's fatal decision. Emboldened by firepower and aided by modern consumer technology to take matters into her own hands. Jazz McKay, among others, continues to grieve his friend's loss. She was a good person. It's all. It... Sorry. It's it's just it's it's still new. It's still it's still a fresh wound. She loved her friends. She loved her guns, and she loved her Dodge Hellcats. Did those last two obsessions contribute to Vicki Hampton's murder? One could see it that way. I'm Robert Price, and this has been Muscle Car Murder a 17 News special report.